Hey, what's up, Creekside? It's Matt here for this episode of Looking Up. Um, hey, we've got a big passage that I want to walk through today. So if you want to pause the video, now would be a great time to open up your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, we're going to start in verse 17, and we're actually going to go all the way to uh, verse or chapter 6, verse 13. We'll skim through it, but I would encourage you to get some time just reading through that whole section. Um, but uh, as we open up and, and ju jump into this, uh, many of you know that I'm newly married, so I'm in my, my rookie season, I guess, my rookie year of marriage. Um, and, you know, the past couple of weeks, I've been, like, noticing diff some differences, uh, just even in myself. You know, like, I've got my ring on, but even if I ugh, pop that off, you may not be able to see it in the video. Uh, but I'm starting to get a tan line where my ring is, where my ring normally is. And then on the underside, uh, where, my, where my fingerprint is... Uh, it's starting to be smoothed down by this ring. And so it's kind of interesting that, you know, even within the first year of being married and wearing this ring that represents that marriage, there is a becoming a change to my physical appearance, which is kind of weird. Uh, but hold with me. Uh, but some of the other things is, you know, I've noticed that, like, I respond differently. You know, there there's a response in me and it be, and that's mainly because it's not my life is no longer just about me you know if, if somebody wants to get some time spending uh you know some time with me my response is now wait hang on let me check with my wife <laughs> let me see if we have anything that's booking us and then i will respond and um, so i'm a lot more thoughtful in that and what i've learned is like if i'm not doing that then i'm not be, like really kind of caring for her and making sure that we're good before i go out and do something uh, on my own um and i think it's super interesting that the lord gives us the the picture of marriage uh to be a representation of, of christ's marriage to the church uh, and so i want to go dive into second corinthians uh because i think there's a cool parallel um, that we see here and, and takes it even a st way further because uh, verse 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you, not to receive the grace of God in vain. I think this is super interesting because what, what is happening here is, is Paul has given this, us this understanding that if we are in Christ, if we have found ourselves married to Christ through the grace of God, we become a completely new creation. Or, or even as it says, a creature, a whole, we become a whole new thing. He says, behold, stop and marvel at the reality that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So, so therefore, you know, even our response to life should be in, in, in line with this message of reconciliation. That God has reconciled us to himself. So that changes how we respond to everything. That we are ministers or ambassadors of this reconciliation. So that, that if anybody has a grievance against us, Man, we should be the first to step in to seek, maybe if it's on, our, on us, or maybe it's not even our fault, but we should be the first to seek to reconcile that relationship, to make our, the relationships that we have with others right again, just like Jesus did for us. By taking on the sin that we, we do, it says that he became sin who knew no sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God so that we might step into the new position of right relationship with God Almighty. That is huge. And, 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 but I, I love that it starts with, it kind of jumps back to where, that, where does that even begin? But chapter 6 verse 1 says, Working together with him then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. So we have to receive the grace of God wholeheartedly 
recognizing that we are so undeserving every single day of the grace of God, that our whole being needs to be reminded, our souls, our very innermost being needs to be reminded of the grace of God that, that we are undeserving of, but that we get to rest in, being reconciled to God. So our response changes. Gosh, even I think it's kind of cool that we get this picture of when Moses saw just the backside of the Lord, because if he looked upon the face of the Lord, he would die. But when he just saw the backside, the trail end as the Lord walked by him between the rocks, he came down glowing. He came down and it terrified people. The people of Israel, the people who were God's chosen people were terrified because Moses was glowing. I don't think that that is something that we need to look back on and be like, oh, well, yeah, that's, that's cool for him. But man, what, what brings about light? What brings about a glow in people? But, but joy, love, encouragement, peace, kindness. There are things, there are attributes of God that within us can cause us to glow. That if we truly are new creations in Jesus, we glow with his love and kindness towards others. We glow with a, just a transformed view of the world. And I think that's so, so sweet. But then here, I'm going to jump down to chapter 6, verse 11, and 12, 11 to 13. It says, We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, or Creeksidians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own affections. In return, widen your hearts also. The, the challenge here is that, that we would widen our hearts. That we would not allow the affections of our hearts to restrict us from pursuing the purpose of, of godliness, the purpose of uh, drawing near to him and being ministers of reconciliation, but that our, our affections would, would align with the affections of God. That our hearts would align with him. So I, my challenge today is that, that we would recognize, that we would first, that we would recognize the grace of God in our lives, not in vain, but wholeheartedly. But then the second thing is that we would know the affections of our hearts. What do we wake up thinking about? What do we, what's the last thing on our mind before we go to bed? What, what is capturing our attention all throughout the day? If it is anything that pulls us away, steers us away from the, the Lord, and if it's not him, gosh, my encouragement and my prayer is that we would lay those things down at his feet. Job talks about, you know, when we lay down the treasures of a fur in the torrent bed, that that is when the Lord becomes our treasure, the treasure of our hearts. And so that is my challenge. That's my encouragement that, that the Lord, we would lay everything down at the Lord's feet so that he would be our true treasure. And then that we would respond from just the grace that we've been given, that we would respond out of the joy that we have in the hope of our salvation that comes from him alone. So that's my prayer that God would give us new eyes, a new heart, new life within us. That, that would spread into every interaction that we have, that people would see Jesus through each and every single one of us. But have a great rest of your day. Talk to you soon. Can't wait to see you.